Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Stanley White Recreation Center Advisory Committee meeting. Um, at this time, we'd like to ask Bernard White to lead us in prayer. Yes, sir. All right, stand, please. Our Father, which art in heaven. The Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything we have received. We ask you to continue to bless us and watch over our family. The Heavenly Father, we ask you to guide us through this pandemic. The Heavenly Father, we thank you for this recreation of the we committee meeting that we're having and hope that things will work out to satisfy all the people. The Heavenly Father, we bless you and you bless us. And we thank you for all the blessings you have stored upon us for all these many years. We ask you to continue to keep us in good health. Those that are not in good health, let them be. Bless our families, bless our in-laws, bless our friends, and keep our enemies not beneath our feet, but away from us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Now, the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge, Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Jennifer, if you do a roll call. Leander Morgan. Talina Massey. James Woods. Here. Bernard White. Here. Reginald Pender. Here. Elijah Brown. Here. Barbara Lee. Curtis Stewart. Jamisha Harris. Here. Foster Hughes. Here. Do we have a quorum? We do. Okay. Okay, at this time, uh, you have the minutes in front of you. I'd like to uh, take a few minutes to look through that. And if anyone would like to make a motion, we'll entertain that. Well, Mr. Chair, I move that the minutes be accepted as printed with any corrections if there be any. I second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Okay. Motion carries. Okay, before we, we get started with the bulk of the meeting, I did want to let everyone know that we did receive a letter of resignation from Candy Midget Ward. So at the last Board of Aldermen meeting, the board um, appointed Curtis Stewart to the board. I uh, spoke with Curtis earlier. He is actually in or out from a, an appointment, so he'll be just a little late. So we look forward to having him as a member. Uh, I spoke to Leander Morgan earlier this afternoon. He is you know, unable to be here this evening. He had some uh, personal life issues he had to deal with his family. So we look forward to him participating uh, in the future. Uh, remotely, we have Reggie Scales and Rachel Nelson uh, with CPL. And we're going to go ahead and turn it over to you guys uh, for the rest of this meeting. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Um, hopefully you can hear us okay. Um, if, if we have, if you have any questions, feel free to jump in. Um, some of it's a little bit hard to hear on our end, so if we need anything repeated, we'll let you know. Um, I just wanted to give you a, a quick update on kind of where we are with our engagement right now. Um, we had um, about almost two weeks ago, we had our first public engagement drop-in session at the Omega Center. We had 91 people on the sign-in sheet. And I cannot tell if that captured every single person who walked through the door, but um, we had really good turnout for that event. Um, we had the, the voting um, on the different items that they'd like to see in the rec center, opportunities for some open-ended comment, um, uh, information gathering about the history of Stanley White and people's experiences with the rec center, um, we had a number, of, I believe it was about 18, 15 to 18 uh, audio files that we were able to capture with people's uh, storytelling for that. Um, and some general information um, updates for everyone, things that we've talked about in our advisory committee at our previous meeting um, that we were able to then get out to the general public. Um, I have information on what I'll do is after this meeting, share some of the data that came in in terms of where the voting numbers came in um, and that where the little sticky dots came in for those different items that people would like to see within the recreation center. 
Um, also, I want to mention that um, out now is our survey. There is a survey. It is live um, and it is online. So please do share that. I understand it's posted on the Parks and Rec Facebook page. Um, but please do share that with, with the community, with your friends, with your family, anyone who uses the space. Um, it's some similar information that we had uh, at our public drop-in session, but a little bit more open-ended uh, and some more opportunities for comment and for adding additional thoughts that they may have about um, different programs and spaces within the facility. Um, a couple other items um, I should mention that were write-in options on those programming sheets was um, a spaces for a boxing, um, a polling, for this facility to be a polling location for elections, um, and emergency shelter were some of the items that came up multiple times um, with, with kind of multiple write-ins on that programming sheet. Um, coming up soon, will be the start of the focus group meeting. So we've got four planned. Um, those are the opportunity, give us the opportunity to meet um, with more discussion with some of the um, interest groups, um, with community leaders, with local nonprofits, with some of the city staff from planning uh, in order to capture their thoughts and ideas and make sure that we're representing all of the local organizations and community as a whole. Um, and those will start um, next week. And so I think Foster has probably sent those out to those organizations, um, the information for those. And so some of you all may hear about that um, as you probably sit on some of those organizations um, within some of those organizations as well. Uh, any other questions or comments from uh, an update on that engagement piece so far? No. Okay. I think they're good, Rachel. Okay. And and I just want to reiterate that we we do need some. Uh, we would like to see some more responses on that survey in particular. So please do you take the opportunity to share that. Um, with with your neighbors and the, the survey only takes really about seven or eight minutes to do it's got a lot of great questions and it's uh, it's very engaging so uh, yes I do encourage everyone to uh, to take that and if you've got a smartphone you can take it on your smartphone as well all you have to do is if you've got a QR code reader you can just snap that code and it'll bring the survey right up and Foster, uh, we can provide a PDF if you want to have printed copies available somewhere. Okay. I think that would be good if we could do that. Okay. Can we get that survey in the um, local paper? We'll reach out to the paper and see if they'll, if they'll uh, do something for us. Yeah, I think, that, I think the more avenues we have for people to do the survey, the better off we'll be on that. Yeah. So I will, um, I will send a PDF of that survey um, to Foster uh, tonight. And then um, Foster, if you want to share that PDF of the committee and then also have printed copies available somewhere. Okay. Okay, so Rachel, are you good at this point? I am good. Okay, so then let's transition to the public uh, or the um, um, what we will call the um, public participation plan. And you know, technology is great until it's not. By the way, this is Reggie Scale. So, Foster, you tell me if you can actually see uh, anything I'm sharing on my screen here. We can see it, and I also have copies for the committee as well for their reference. Great. Okay, so everybody has a copy? Yes. Perfect. All right, so what I'd like to do now uh, is to kind of walk you through what really is driving the process as we kind of walk through this planning public engagement piece and then transition to the concept design and uh, cost estimating piece. Uh, this is a public participation plan. Again, we alluded to this during your initial meeting and um, 
this is something that ultimately, as we kind of walk through it tonight, that at the end of it, my, my, my uh, request is that the committee actually adopt this and then it will be forwarded on to uh, the Board of Aldermen for um, consultation. Um, this is uh, also, you know, FEMA is providing, uh, you know, uh, quite a bit of uh, dollars associated with this project. So I believe somebody from FEMA uh, may be participating or monitoring our meeting this evening. So uh, as we go through it, public participation plan, you can see here um, there is a um, uh, planning, programming, and cost estimate. And we've got a little signature. We've got a place here for uh, actually for this group to adopt it. So let's walk through it. Uh, as an overview, the uh, outline is an intro for the framework, the engagement framework, the outreach tools and, and uh, methods, and then uh, uh, a documentation and evaluation process. Now, the interesting thing about uh, public involvement plan or public participation plans is that the, the best ones are living documents. And so what you'll see as we go through this one is uh, things that, uh, you know, Rachel and I have heard or things that have been communicated as we have engaged with this committee as well as these uh, these meetings. And so as a uh, kind of a, a starting point, the background, uh, it, it just kind of establishes the background for who Stanley White was and what we're doing here. Also, a uh, big part of this is the budget and um, you know what we're gonna be working with as we go through this process. Uh, and then we have uh, some things that we talked about before, uh, which is, current options for rebuilding the Stanley White Recreation Center. This came from my initial uh, discussions uh, in August with this kickoff meeting. And the committee said that, you know, there are things that are needed, the community needs and then recreation needs and then the location of the new facility. But if you look at paragraph four there, the go forward strategy and the focus of this plan and really what we're doing moving forward um, is number one, uh, we want to determine what goes inside the building. That's key, all right? And then we'll get to the discussion of, uh, you know, where it's located. And, you know, listen to folks at the uh, initial meeting. I know that's a big deal. Does it stay in the current location? Where does it go? But again, uh, the focus right now is what is the highest and best use of the community needs and the recreation needs and that ultimately will drive location and foster if there's any time you want to stop here and ask any questions please let me know otherwise i'm just going to uh, just kind of go through this and uh, uh sounds good pace here okay all right uh and so the objectives of the plan a good and decent uh public involvement plan really it's 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 reflective of what the community needs and that's what you'll see here. Um, uh, but let me go to that second paragraph. Uh, usable information, a commitment to the community feedback. Let me stop right there. The, the, the key thing that I heard during those workshops, and I think we all heard that, was folks want to know that they're not wasting their time. In essence, if they're giving their, their, their ideas and their opinions and their values, they want those to come out on the back end terms of ultimately what's going to be in this facility and there's a commitment I knew Foster has, has uh, you know pushed that over and over again this is not uh, kind of you know checking a box but you know the, the recreation department as well as the Board of Alderman are serious about what we're doing here and then the community uh, is most likely to share what they want to be included in the facility and the facility is most likely to be successful those two bullets right there are interchanged, and so it has to be something that works together. Um, all right, then we move on to uh, the, uh, sorry about that. The uh, committee, you know, why are you here? And uh, what's the purpose of your being? And ultimately, you know what this comes down to, you know, the Board of Aldermen in May uh, essentially established this committee. 
And uh, as a part of this document, we'll reference the actual resolution uh, that, that sets you up. But the key things here, uh, design and development of the new facility, recommending um, you know, what services are there, being a liaison, that's your role, between the city and citizens in the neighborhood, and really just overall community. Now, the mission objectives, again, this is one thing I talked to you about uh, at our kickoff meeting. You know, why are we here? What are you doing here? Um, and what it comes down to really is, um, you know, the mission objective you tasked by the Board of Aldermen, assist the New Bern Parks and Rec Department in planning, public outreach, programming, cost estimating for the reconstruction of a new facility. And then the goals, uh, again, these all come from what I heard from you folks at the initial meeting, discussions with Foster and what we heard at the workshop, and then the steering committee and the things that you would agree to do as a part of this process, uh, the mission and goals, broad, flexible plan, engaging the citizens, clear definitions of those elements of the program. And that's really kind of a key point for the committee, which you are the kind of that, that group that is Again, I go back to that connectivity piece between you and the city. You're the folks who are not only listening to, but you're also kind of pushing the information out at the same time, if that makes sense. Uh, one of the key things that we brought forth from the workshop is number five, paragraph five. Decouple planning from controversial elements from uh, planning for the park or the recreation facility. You know what, there, there every, um, um, every uh, project that, you know, Rachel and I are involved in, there are always issues that predate the project that we're working on. And so it is incumbent upon the committee really to say, okay, we understand these are issues. And if you remember, we talked about the parking lot concept. If there are issues that folks are, are talking about, we put those in the parking lot and we figure out a way to deal with them. But we want to stay focused, and that's what the steering committee, that's your role, responsibility to forward. And then the other issues here, you can see that improved communications, that's part of what we're discussing here, and then consultation, evaluating the process, and then being flexible as we go through this process is key also to its success. All right, we move on to uh, chapter D, which is the project engagement framework. Uh, collaboration and participation. That's really what we're talking about here. Collaboration and participation. And when we do these things in terms of reaching out to the public in, in really a forthright manner, we establish trust. And that's what we're trying to do here. Um, the second uh, paragraph there, public participation input, uh, internal commitment, learning from the public, uh, selecting a level of participation uh, the process and then the participation plan. Uh, I will focus on that last one, paragraph five, in terms of the participation plan. Um, you are, uh, again, deemed by the Board of Aldermen as their, you know, their, their, their touchstone, their, their group here to shepherd this process, but ultimately the Board of Aldermen have control over this. So this process that we put together, they may want to come back and say, nope, we want to do something different, right? And that's okay, uh, but again, you, you, you're, you're driving it, but they are ultimately in control. I think we all understand that, okay? Any questions to this point? Any questions from anyone? Okay, not so far. Okay, we'll keep moving. All right, and framework. This is what we've been talking about, and Rachel gave you an overview just a, uh, a few minutes ago about this very thing. And so what this does, it, it breaks the project into phases. And again, the outreach phase is where we are right now. That extends from the initial time when we came down and, and spent some time with you at the kickoff meeting, all the way through uh, the October timeframe. And once we get through this process, and, and again, we're soliciting information, we're talking to you, we're having workshops, we're having the focus group meetings, the small group meetings. We'll take that information and transition it into, okay, this is ultimately what goes in the, uh, in the building. And then we're gonna transition to 
actually doing schematic designs or concept designs, uh, doing cost estimates to see if we can actually afford what goes in the building. This particular uh, slide here is talking about outcomes of what we hope to achieve between the two sections. Again, we're in the, uh, if you look to the project phase column, we're in the facility needs and location brainstorming phase right now. And the desired outcomes is that yellow uh, column, which is a comprehensive and that's key list of ideas and requests of what should be in the facility. And that's what the public is looking for. And then as we get to the facility concept design finalization phase, simple and easy to understand uh, ideas that we can translate, translate into reality. And so as we look at this, the involved and form, those are two, two issue areas that you'll see throughout this document, involved and form. Uh, and the, and the, the smart objectives, communication items, tools, techniques, all of these issues, again, that's part and parcel of what we're working through. All right, so this is the, the, the part of the document I think that most people really want to understand or uh, know about, which is the outreach methods and tools. And so right now we're in phase one, as we said, and the schedule and the tools, you can see they're in phase one. The advisory committee meetings, that's what we're doing right now. And those happen generally on a monthly basis and that connects you to process. Um, another tool is the public engagement sessions. And we had the one last month. We'll have another one uh, in the near future where we're actually talking to folks and getting ideas and thoughts on a broad level. The first meeting was generally, what do you want? All right, what, what do you need? What, the, what, what does the community, not in 1976, but what does it need in 2020, 25, 35, and beyond? And then uh, the online surveys, uh, Rachel mentioned, that is live. And so we need the committee to really step out with the public and say, all right, you have an opportunity to give your thoughts and ideas beyond you know, what we talked about in the last meeting. Get online, do the survey, because that's going to help inform us to what, what, what community needs. And then uh, the focus or small group meetings, uh, which I'll, I'll talk about in just a moment. Those will begin in the next week or so. And then the finding from phase, findings from phase one. Again, that's key. Findings from phase one. What goes inside the building? We take that and start talking about costs and opportunities and possibilities, and then we transition into a location discussion. Uh, and then that's phase two of the document where we are literally talking about, you know, can we make this work, the needs and desires and aspirations of the community with the monies that are available. And that phase two concludes with the uh, Board of Aldermen uh, in the uh, um, January timeframe. And so here's the schedule, and this is what we're talking about right now. Uh, we are right now, right about this point, as you can see clearly, because we're starting to get into the focus group meetings right now. And again, we hope to complete this process at the end of the month. And then, as you see here, we are, uh, we'll move into the next phase next month. And this is a little cleaner uh, version of the schedule in terms of where we are and where we're trying to get to. And again, the, the hope is to conclude this process January 2021 and move on to the next phase. This is a uh, process or decision schedule and I do want to go through this uh, just to make sure we're all on the same page here. Uh, Scripters as well as the location. The decision uh, is, is being made. What goes in the facility and the location, decision makers, the aldermen with advice from this committee, scope and the uh, impact and complexity. It, it is high impact, but it's also somewhat co complex in terms of what we're trying to, uh, trying to accomplish here. Uh, a, 
you know, part of the complexity is that we're trying to compress a lot into a short period of time. But we're also cognizant and aware that the neighborhood's been waiting on this facility for a long time to bring it back together. Uh, the timeline, uh, obviously August to January, uh, the public is in being involved. The amenities and activities, uh, they need to re reflect what they need. Uh, level of involvement, uh, involve and collaborate, and then uh, specific information being sought, that's what we're talking about. And then the information being used, uh, and then that goes back to this committee. Uh, this particular uh, uh, page references the stakeholders. This comes from what you told us at the last, at the kickoff meeting, but also what we heard at the, um, at the, uh, uh, the initial uh, public meeting. And I do want to mention these individually because I want to make sure that we're not missing anything. We, we're scheduling three meetings with a fourth meeting optional. The first meeting is scheduled for 6 p.m. on September 21. All these meetings are virtual. Uh, and Foster is going to schedule a location for those who don't have access to the internet um, to come in and, and participate as a part of this. So the, the first community workshop, community leaders forum or small group meetings, the People's Assembly, NAACP, the Greater Duffield Residence Council, Concerned Citizens, Build Back Better Stanley White, and the Ministerial Alliance. All right, so that's the first group. Hold up one second, Reggie. Now, I have a question for the committee. Can you think of any other com com um, uh, community leaders that we should invite? Is this now we've still got some nonprofits to go on the next thing that Reggie talks about, but if you can think of anyone else that we should invite, we'd like to know that now so we can extend that invitation. Okay. And Foster, I'm having trouble hearing. I don't know if that was directed to me or to the steering committee. I was talking to the committee. I was asking if they okay. had any more recommendations for this first meeting. Are the nonprofits going to be at this? Be able to come to the first meeting also? We've got one designed just, just for, for the them. nonprofits. Yes, and that will be in the blue shaded. What you'll see on that. Yeah, I had seen that already, but I, I, um, I kind of think everybody should be involved at one time, maybe, and then have a breakout for each independent groups. That way, you get everybody's opinion. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe somebody else could think about it a different way, but. Reggie, can you hear what Mr. Woods is saying? I, I'm sorry, Foster. I'm having uh, a hard time. Reggie, what I said, you. can you hear me now, Reggie? Um, yeah, I can, I can hear you. So. Okay, so what I was saying was something about maybe the first meeting should involve everybody and then do your breakout meetings after you have your first initial meeting with everybody and kind of get an idea from your stakeholders okay. and your nonprofits yeah. together. Is this Mr. Woods? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I thought I caught your voice. So what I would say is the reason that we uh, set the meetings up this way is we're trying to make sure that we get kind of a good cross-section so that we have folks who feel free to speak. A lot of folks don't want to talk in large groups or large crowds. And so that initial meeting that we had a few weeks ago, that was the big kind of group meeting. But now we're trying to narrow this thing down. And, uh, and, and I'm not saying no, Mr. Woods. What I'm saying is if, if we can look at it from this perspective and there needs to be additional discussions after that, then Rachel and I can definitely schedule or set something up. But I need to understand when you're saying maybe it needs to be more open, tell me a little bit about, more about, about what you Well, the reason why I say that is because looking at the community stakeholders in a nonprofit organization, it's a lot of the same people. So, you know, yeah. like you got Antoinette Bosky, who's the people assembly, plus she's involved with him. Uh, you okay. know, so you might, the people that's in the community group might be some of the same people that's in a nonprofit group. And I, and I yeah. believe that is true looking at the nonprofit list, you know, because you have the Arts Council, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, Craven County Schools, Swiss Bear, Carolina East, Redevelopment Commission, the African American Heritage Cultural Center, 
I, I, I can think of one, two, three, four. Reggie, do you want to scroll? Yeah, so we actually yeah. have, sorry, that was only a partial of that, of the second. Yeah, page. And, I, and I think he may be looking at the document. Are you looking at the document, Mr. Wood? Yes, I'm looking directly oh, at the okay. document that, that, that's in front of me. But all I'm saying is I, I believe that some of the same people are in both focus groups. And then that way, if we bring them together, we can get that opinion, then maybe put them in a breakout. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? But I mean, whatever's here is here. I understand why it's like this. I just thought it would be a better idea to do it that way. That's just my personal yeah. well, Can I jump in for a sec? Sure. Um, so you know, I, I definitely understand that. Um, what we have found is that uh, we don't get a lot of participation in these kinds of virtual um, sessions from community members speaking up and it's really hard um, from a virtual standpoint and actually even in person to um, without doing kind of the drop-in session that we had to be able to give people the opportunity to talk um, and to all voice their opinion so one of the things that we look to do here is to kind of pull out the those groups um, of people and if, if we need to add more here then that's definitely um, we can definitely do that um, I, I think and I what we left is, is that fourth focus group um, is open right now and so that's an opportunity where if we get when we get through some of these that if we look and we um, see who may who we may have missed what other opportunities what other organizations um, come into play after having these, that's the opportunity to start to bring those people in. So, and then we still do have another drop-in session planned um, as well at the end, after these focus groups. So. And, and one of the things that I'd really like for us to be able to have for the for at least the fourth focus group session is to um, uh, find some youth in the community that would like to, because we, we want their opinion. Uh, the youth are going to use this facility um, at a minimum of 50 percent of the time and so their input is very important i think at the um, drop-in session we may have had about a dozen kids that came through and so we definitely would like to get um, more comments from from the children of the community did that okay. did that help answer your, your question or comments at all and yeah, it, I that's not to say what, that this is second stone so if we need if if you feel that we need to modify this. No, no, um, I understand you, you're, you're, you're saying kind well. of smaller is better than trying to put, have a larger group because a lot of people are not going to participate and trying to get in. I, and, and I know the heck, I, I, trust me, I understand Zoom. I've been, uh, I'm so sick of Zoom, I can't tell you. But I understand <laughs> um, where you're going with this, that you want it smaller. I just thought because it, really looking down the list to me, you have some of the same people in both both groups but I, yeah. I, I get it I get the I get the concept the smaller it is the kind of better it is that way people will voice their opinion a little bit better and it'll be easier to control it'll be less chaotic on on, on zoom I, I got you I do get it and I, I believe um, that Foster when he sent out the invite was going to ask that if you're representing multiple groups that you attend one session and say both and okay. that you send a different person from your group um, to that other session. So that you don't, again, you don't have the same person coming three times that you're getting a better cross section of even those organizations um, as well. Okay. So at, at the end of the day, ultimately the committee has to be happy with what we're doing. So if, if, if you would like a different mix you know, we've, we've, we've kind of given you our, uh, our, our basis of determination. Then let us know now. We can, we can adjust it appropriately. Any other comments on, on the focus group? Okay. I, I'm not hearing any comments. So what I would say is, if we can move forward with the way we have it set up, and if there are individuals who want to provide more detail, then we could open ourselves up to uh, a one-on-one -on -one discussion. Would that work with the committee? Yes, that will work, Rich. Uh, and also, if there are individuals who express interest in attending, um, 
we could include them in these in one one of these focus absolutely groups. so the focus groups don't have to be just community leaders or just nonprofit organizations it was just a way for us to be able to target that group in the way that we drive the conversation that happens there um, and make sure that then just to have people who are thinking about using the space in maybe similar um, organizational ways but if if there are community members that are want to attend that aren't part of these organizations we would gladly welcome any other attendees as well okay um, there is a, a, a third and fourth group we will uh, spend some time in talking with uh, um, the city of Newburn staff obviously they will play a big part in either uh, project development review or, or long-term maintenance for uh, the facility itself as well as the supporting uh, infrastructure around it uh, and that's scheduled for September 24. Uh, we do have a fourth focus group meeting which we set out as optional and that may be an opportunity for uh, Mr. Wood and maybe for some of these other individuals who we need to pull in uh, to talk about these issues. Um, comments or questions? other than what we've already discussed. And again, I, I, I want to be clear to make sure because I know I've talked to some and all of you at, at the workshop as well as the previous meeting, and we know that, you know, what I've heard, the Redevelopment Kitty Commission, we really need to talk to them uh, because what they're doing and some of their plans have relevance here. It ties into just the planning department as well, but we're also, we're looking at this thing in context of its importance. It's critically important to the neighborhood. We've heard that over and over and over again. We understand that. But we also don't want to overlook the critical nature of this project and its importance to the city of New. Right. Mr. White, were you okay. going to make a comment? No. Or right now, I'm just listening and some All right, I'm hearing some comments, have. not clearly, but are we good to move on? Or hold, hold on one second. A couple Reggie. of things I might have uh, questions about. Uh, so far, as I was telling Mr. Hughes, I, I'm just sitting here listening, and anything that seems like it's going to shake a little bit, uh, I will say something. I'm just looking over the sheet, and as I look over the sheet, I notice how certain organizations or certain groups are totally together. And are they going to get the same input from the person that's talking to them when, when they had that Zoom? Is it going to be the same identical uh, wording or same sheet everybody follows? Reggie, could you hear that? Reggie? No, I, I'm sorry. I'm not catching that. Rachel, I don't know if you were able to, to hear that. So, so Reggie, can you hear me? Yeah, yes. Okay, so so Mr. White asked the question. We've got we're, we're planning on three or four focus group meetings. So, uh, and you and Rachel will be leading these meetings, correct? That is correct. So, along with you, obviously, you'll right, be a part of that. Right. So, will you be following the same agenda and asking the same questions at each meeting, so that it's fair for all that are participating in the uh, each individual meeting? Um, yes, it will be primarily the same um, questions and the same presentation at each one. Uh, we may have, we may ask the questions in a slightly different way in some of them, um, especially those kinds of, that focus group three and four, four being a little bit unknown, um, and three being more regarding uh, maintenance, uh, planning, um, and those, and stormwater is going to be a, a big one. Um, here as well. So for meetings, for the first two focus group meetings, I could see us having the same presentation. Okay. What other questions do we have? That, that was one of my basic questions. My basic question, and the reason I ask that question is because I see uh, some uh, community stakeholders and, and I see all them together. I see the community uh, people from certain areas. I see all of them together. I don't see a blend of them mixed up where there'd be some people of certain neighborhoods involved in it and, and uh, being able to put some input in. 
I see us being all cattle together. Okay, one group, two groups, three groups, and as they're broken down like that, the, these these people are mostly people who are have all, some of the same thing in common. So they need to, some people need to be in there to let them know how they feel, not to just go through the program that we're going through, and then and in the end we know that the board of almost are going to have the final decision. But if they have the final decision, at least let it be that everybody has some input in and they knew that people that wasn't on the same level of all the other people know what they really want. That's all we fight for. Okay. All right. All right. What other comments do we have? Okay, no, no other comments at this time, Reggie. Okay, we'll, we'll continue on. Um, and this piece really uh, is uh, our documentation and evaluation. Any good plan has this as a part of it. Uh, this is a uh, public involvement plan, uh, and we'll have an engagement summary at the end of it. And basically what we do with this document is all the information that is flowing into us becomes a part of this document. The comments that we heard during your initial meeting, comments at the workshop, the small group meetings, all of that information will be a part of this document. And once we complete it, uh, we will uh, uh, present it to council. We will do what's called a plus delta, which means we'll evaluate it in context of what we've done and whether or not it uh, reflects what the community is looking for. And then we'll do an evaluation at the end uh, in what is the success and ultimately how do we determine that success. And so these discussions will happen in the December, uh, uh, January time frame. And again, all this will be presented to council, but it will be presented to you before council because you need to understand, make sure that we have all the right information here. Uh, and so that's the document in, in, in its entirety. Again, it's a living document, so it's going to change. And uh, what we're asking for tonight, uh, unless you have other comments or objections or inclusions, we're asking you to adopt this tonight because this will be our guiding document as we work through the next few months. And so, Foster, with that, I'll turn it back to you. So do we have any comments on, on the plan that's been presented? Um, I, I know this is a lot of information to, uh, to take in right now if, they, you know. If Foster, I don't have a comment. Well, somewhat of a comment on the document, but based on the fact that on the second to the last page where the D, the D section, where it says the document, the public involvement, plan engagement plan as a living document, and will be updated throughout the project. It will be updated during the process and then shared with the individual organization, staff, and participating in it. I think it may be his papers. Maybe. Oh, it sounded like somebody was snoring. <laughs> Your papers on the <laughs> But however, that it was said it would be updated and loaded to, uh, loaded to the website. Now it says the city's website, but then we, then we say something about that there will be a Stanley White website set up to where people can individually go and get that information that's correct and that website is set up it's basically under this under the uh, newgrednc.gov but it's and, it, and if you'll look at this uh, this is in your packets tonight that has a survey right below the qr code is is the site it's newburnnc.gov forward slash stanley white and so on that page you'll basically see this photo, it'll have the QR code. It has all of the meeting agendas and minutes. We're also working to put, uh, there'll be a, uh, a link to, to, to each of these meetings that are recorded so folks can come and look at that. Any studies that have been done, all that stuff will be on there. Um, I had a conversation with Reggie earlier today and um, based on some information that has been received at, at the last meeting and some emails that have come in, uh, there will be a frequently asked questions section under there that has uh, the official 
the official answer so people can look look at that site for, for all the official information. And so this committee is more than welcome to share that information with, with the public as well. Okay, that was, that was my concern because I wanted to make sure that it was accessible. Yes. I, I think that's one of our key, one of the biggest things we have to do is make it accessible to the public, you know, because I was talking to someone yesterday and it's still a, a mistrust. People in the community think that somehow they're going to get screwed over and, and I keep asking them, what are you talking about? Tell me what you mean, but they won't come out right. and say. So I guess the more we give them, the better off we are. That's right. I went through that yesterday. I'll also note that um, the handout that we had at the drop-in session had a QR code, which will take you directly to that website for standing by as well. Okay, Mr. White, you were making a comment. Well, I was saying what Mr. Wood said, I went through something like that yesterday, and somebody come out of clear blue and start asking me questions and talking. And as they were asking questions, they're talking, and I'm saying to myself and looking at them, I'm saying they're so far away from what, what we're talking about. You know, and I just told them you know, I need to get more information. <clears throat> and that's the only way I can do it, you know. I, I get redundant, it goes to my head. I can't it. Okay. So what other comments do we have on this document? Does, does anyone feel comfortable to want to make a motion to, to move forward, or, or would you like to absorb this uh, over the next um, several weeks until our next meeting? It, it's, up to the, it's up to the committee to decide. I think we need to resolve it until for our next meeting. And not push it too much. I like to get a chance to sit down and try to go through and underline stuff and the things that I see in there that I may might not agree with, but then I can get with somebody else that can tell me a little bit more and make me feel a little bit more confident in it. I don't want to be the one that be balking, but I, I, I will balk if I'm not satisfied about something. So I need to know, you know, other than that, uh, when we do this. Without there would not be any changes, or would there be any changes in it? So, correct correct us if we're wrong, Reggie. But this document is subject to change as as we move forward. When we receive additional input from the public for, from each meeting, things can change. Is that correct? This document will change. Trust me, it will change. It will evolve. It's called a living document. Most good public participation plans are. are or they evolve as you kind of move through it. The big change will be obviously the information that comes in, but if there are things that we need to adjust as a result of comments that we're getting in from the meetings over the next couple of weeks, even through the end of the year, yeah, the document will change. I think we should go ahead and approve this based on the fact that it is a living document and that any changes that we need to make, we can make the changes as we go along because we need to start somewhere and this gives us a starting point. You know, and it, and it, it, it evolves around the project. So e even if we go through and read it and find out things that we don't agree with it and then we bring them back, we email you or Reggie, it can be changed immediately because it is a living document. But if we, I think if we sit on it, then we're gonna be further behind. You know, the goal is to, get, to start on this building and get it done because what well, it's two years now we're, you know we're looking at two years and eight days two years this week i believe earlier this week yeah so it's, go ahead it's not going to change the time because we're going they're going to still meet a certain time of the month all we all we need to know and all i need to know and i'm, I'm going to do my part just i need to go through it and get a better understanding of it ain't about no putting off or stalling, none, none of that. I need to know. I, I'm not one of those like say yay and then come back later on and had to correct something when most of us haven't even uh, really read the whole thing. We've been listening to the gentleman explain it to us and been following along with him. But if I had to go back and explain, I had to talk to somebody right now, I couldn't tell you but so much. And, and, and I couldn't stand behind it. That's all I need to do. 
So, you know, whatever y'all decide to do is all right, but I'm still going to do my thing. Okay, so if any, any committee members would like to make a motion, we'll entertain that at this time. Well, Mr. Chair, I move that we go ahead and adopt the living document that is before us for the Standing Right Recreational Project. Is there a second? Okay, we have a second. Any discussion? All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, no? No. All right, the motion carries. So, Reggie, the plan has been approved. Okay, very good. And so, as we include the discussion on the plan, there's a couple of things that I would encourage the committee to focus on as we move forward. And, and, and two things. Number one, it, it, it's it's the, the, the thing I kept hearing during the workshop. One of the things was location. And again, it, it's, the, it's the, the location has not been determined at this point. And I think the committee needs to make sure the city understands, I mean, the neighborhood understands that. It's about what goes in the building make sure it reflects the needs of 2020 and beyond. And the second piece is, you know, the, the, the folks were kind of saying, you know, if you do move it, you know, apartments, whatever else is going to be placed in that location. Uh, and that's the discussion that's going on right now. And my understanding in, in talking to Foster, that's not something that is planned because that overall park and that park area, obviously, that's not part of this project, but uh, my understanding is commitment from the city to maintain that specific area. So uh, I'm, I'll, I'll work with Foster to get some answers to not only those questions to others, as he referenced in, the, in, a, in a frequently asked questions piece on that website that we're talking about. So with that said, um, that concludes my uh, remarks for the night, Foster. And, and I'm going to follow up on uh, Reggie's comment just to be clear on Henderson Park. That property can never be sold. It will always be protected as a park. We cannot build things on it. We cannot build houses on it. It's protected by by the uh, the covenant from a land and water conservation fund grant that we received back in the 70s. And also there's protections from a uh, Parks and Recreation Trust Fund grant. So it will always be a park. can yeah. never be sold. Uh, I remember one night at the meeting, Mark said that we couldn't run a road through there. Cannot put a road through there. Okay, and and um, when the comment was brought to me, I had to, I had to take that up with uh, um, our consultants with Recreation Resources Service. And could a road be put through there? There would have to be a, a, a reason for that a good reason and there's no good reason when you've got a road that's adjacent to what what uh, that group proposed to do um, you've already got a route why put another one within 50 to 100 feet, feet of that made no sense so there was there was no need to do that that's what and things like that will they'll never happen All right. okay so we've done with this I have some stuff that has come to, to my attention okay i know we were talking about location has not been determined but at the drop-in meeting it was uh a location was brought up and then afterwards i've been bombarded with this so i told him i would bring it up tonight somebody mentioned the sand hill location down on gastonia boulevard at the end of gastonia Boule gaston boulevard i i don't i'm not from here so I'm, yes that won't work. That's what uh, that's what the Fitzgerald building is. Uh, it used to be the same. It's built right on that. Right. I'm okay. not familiar with that. Okay. Then the next, I've heard nothing on that. All right. Then uh, the next, well, the person was supposed to come to the alderman's meeting and voice their opinion about that because that's what I told them. That was probably the best place to go and do that. And the second thing was, um, if it was brought to my attention that if the building is moved up to the the new location on Third Avenue. Who's going to be responsible for the safety of the kids in the park because it's such a far distance away? So, Henderson Park is just like any other park. While while there, 
we don't have we don't have supervision. We don't have supervision at Southwest Parrot Park outside the park. Kids can go to Kidsville and play. So there's no difference between that Union Point Park, Mary White Park, or any of the other parks. Right. Even even when Stanley White Recreation Center was there, mm -hmm. unless there was an organized program, staff were not outside monitoring what the kids did. They were monitoring the activities inside the recreation center. Okay, I yeah. said that to them, yeah. but I. I gave them my word and I would bring it up so Absolutely. that work that could be said at this meeting and the public could hear that. Yes. If there if there are organized activities, yes, parks and recreation staff are monitoring. If there are not, no staff are not monitoring any city parks. Okay. I'm good with it. I mean I, I told them I had to bring it up and I would Sure, absolutely. That, that that's what we're here for. Okay. To discuss any any uh, questions or comments that folks may have. Does anyone have any other uh, items they would like to bring up this evening? Well, if there are no other items, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming this evening. All right. Thank you. Do you need to do a second and a motion with that or no? Yeah, let's go ahead. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank, you. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> yes, sir.